Ay, que está preso, salió para el sol de su vecina y así va a estar muriendo. No, guys, por ahí vienen. El huevo me decía. Lo de Benito. Hi. How's everything, guys? Welcome to the second video conference of this module. Uh, I truly sorry for being like a little bit late, but I'm just getting home. So I was like kind of in a hurry. All right. So, but it's good to be here with you guys. So for the ones who are at home, please remember, try to turn on your cameras, okay? This is like for the ones who are at home already. So I am just going to start with the attendance list. Give me one second, guys. I am just loading this. And let's see if it is working. Oh, it's here. Okay, good. So let's start with the attendance list, guys. We have a lot of things to practice tonight. So we are going to start. A second. Uh, Adi Beatriz. Adi, Adi, Adi is here. Mm -mm. All right, so she's not here yet. Uh, Ana Cristina. Okay, not even Anna. Brian Aldair. Present. Okay, good. Mm, Carlos Antonio. Okay, so he is not here. Carlos Enrique. Present teacher. Okay, good. Uh, Claudia Marcela. Present. Okay, nice. Uh, Doris Alejandra. Present. Okay, good. Uh, Evelyn Karina. Present. Present. Okay, good. I didn't see. It. All right, Graciela Saray. Graciela Saray, so she's not here yet. Guillermo Eduardo. Present. Okay, good. Irma del Tránsito. Okay, so she is not here yet. Jacqueline Yvonne. Jacqueline Yvonne, are you there? Okay, just give me a second, guys. Okay, so she is there, but probably she is busy. Uh, Juan Carlos Fuentes. I'm here. Okay, good. Uh, Katia Maria. Present. Okay, nice. Kenia Maricela. Kenia Maricela. Okay, so she is not here yet. Maritza Elizabeth. Present. Okay, good. Marvin Alexander. Marvin. Okay, so Marvin is not here yet. Pedro Rigoberto. Pedro. Okay, so Pedro is not here. Rosalie Yvonne. 
present teacher. Ah, okay, good. Uh, Susana Carolina. Present teacher. Okay, good. Teresa Noemi. Hello, Teresa. teacher. Pres present ah, teacher. Ah, okay, perfect. Very Perdón. good. Okay, very good, Hello. guys. So, basically... Okay, basically, uh, yeah, I mean, these are like the people that are right now, probably uh, throughout the class, uh, your other classmates are going to get connected. So guys, let's start. Welcome back to the second video conference from this module. So before starting with uh, the activities and the topic that we have for tonight, I would like to start doing a short feedback, okay? Or a short review about what we were doing last class, right? So about what we were doing yesterday, basically. Okay, so what do you guys remember from yesterday's class? ¿Qué recordamos de la clase pasada? Comencemos con una pequeña retroalimentación, okay? Un pequeño repaso. What was the topic that we were discussing last class, guys? The use of infinitives. Ah, okay, very good. Thank you. So we were discussing the uses of infinitives. Very good. And uh, how do I form an infinitive? ¿Cómo puedo formar un infinitivo? ¿Qué necesito para que un verbo sea un infinitivo? We, we can add the preposition to. Ah, okay. No sé si preposition. Very good. Very good. So basically what I need is just to write the preposition or use, in this case, the preposition, okay, before the verb, right? So in that case, it means that if I got verbs like, give me a sec. I'm gonna spread this out. If I got, oops, this is getting weird. If I got the topic over here, infinitives. So basically, in an infinitive is just adding the preposition to plus verb in base form, right? For example, if you have to eat, to drive, to play, okay, or to manage, for example, right? So basically, these ones are called, guys, infinitives, right? Why? Because you are using the preposition to before the verb, okay? And what are the functions of an infinitive? Remember, an infinitive can be used like the subject of the sentence, Right? Puede ser usado un infinitivo como el sujeto dentro de una oración. Correct? Like the uh, vision and mission statements that we were discussing yesterday, if you remember. For example, si usamos un infinitivo como un sujeto, recuerden, este infinitivo tiene que ir al inicio de la oración. Correct? For example, to eat... Healthy food it brings a lot of benefits. Ah, to eat healthy food brings a lot of benefits. Ah, comer saludable trae muchos beneficios. So in this case, to eat is basically the infinitive. And in this case, this infinitive is acting like the subject of the sentence. In este caso, está actuando como el sujeto dentro de una oración, right? So basically, that was part of what we were discussing yesterday during the class, okay? Solo que ayer lo vimos con la misión y visión de las empresas, right? For example, 
another one to help students improve their language skills for example this one will be my mission with you guys to help students improve their language skills so in this case to help is basically the infinitive right so and in this case remember an infinitive is basically working like the subject of the sentence in this case acá un infinitivo está actuando como el sujeto dentro de una oración recuerden también que ayer hablábamos que un infinitivo puede ir también después de ciertos verbos ok y lo podemos categorizar así infinitives after some verbs ¿Qué verbos puede, podemos usar que pueden ir eh, se, proced, eh, digamos, seguidos de un infinitivo? Need. Ok. Need want. want. All right. Estos son algunos de los verbos que necesitamos. Like. All right. Después de estos verbos, si vamos a colocar un adverbo adicional, ese verbo tiene que ir en infinitivo. Ok. Need, want, like. Uh, let me see. Start. Ok. En many more. Teacher, perdón. Vamos a dejar una, una pregunta. Yes. Y no sé si me perdí ahí, pero ¿qué, qué, ¿qué características hay como para que sean estos verbos en específico los que pueden llevar el to después? Ok. Básicamente existen reglas especiales para este tipo de eh, verbos que después de eh, ciertos verbos, en realidad, si vamos a escribir otro verbo adicional, necesitamos colocar ese verbo adicional con una preposición ya convertido en infinitivo. Más adelante, no sé si tenemos este módulo que vamos a ver, right, el uso de el gerundio y el infinitivo seguido de verbos. Recuérdense que en el inglés... Dos verbos no pueden ir en forma base. ¿Qué quiere decir? Dos verbos no pueden ir de manera a uh, base juntos. Por lo general, el segundo verbo siempre se tiene que modificar y tiene dos formas de poderse modificar. Una de ellas es optando la forma de un infinitivo y la otra manera es optando la forma de un gerundio. ¿A qué nos referimos con un gerundio? Que, por cierto, es la clase... El tema que vamos a discutir esta noche el ING. es básicamente cuando colocamos ING al verbo. That's correct, right? Entonces, existen categorías de verbos que van precedidos de un gerundio y verbos que van precedidos también de un infinitivo. En este caso, estos verbos van precedidos de un infinitivo. Entonces, ya son categorías previamente establecidas, right? Que en este caso, al igual que el uso de los verbos en presente y en pasado, nada más queda pues tratar de memorizarlas y ponerlas en práctica. Right? So that's like the, the way how we can, we can do. Gracias, teacher. Gracias. Okay. okay, good. Bueno, de hecho, al finalizar la clase, I got a book related to this. Tengo una lista de estos en un libro. Y voy a mandar una, 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 una fotografía de esa lista para que ustedes la puedan tener, right? Creo que es, 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 va a ser eh, bastante útil para ustedes más adelante. It will be very interesting. I'm going to send it to the WhatsApp group at the end of the class, right? Just for you to have it in there. For example, if you use the verb need, okay, you can start sentences like, for example, I need to practice... You see, after need, the next one, the next verb practice in this case has to go with an infinitive. I need to practice English, for example. You see, in that case is preceded by an infinitive. Another one, using want. My students want to check this out my students want to speak english 
fluently. Ah, mis estudiantes quieren hablar inglés de manera fluida, right? So that's another example that we can have, all right, using this structure. I'm going to move this a little bit up so I can help you up with another example. For example, using the verb like, let's say, we like to, uh, we like to be responsible at work, for example. We like to be responsible at work. Ah, nos gusta, right? Nos gusta ser responsables en el trabajo. So you see, sentences like that, después de los verbos, el siguiente que precede está en modo infinitivo, right? Let's remember, guys, esto nada más es un brief uh, Review about what we were doing yesterday, okay? And then we got a start. For example, she starts to ask questions about the class. Ah, she starts to ask questions about the class. Ah, ella comienza a preguntar. Sobre la clase. So you see, after these verbs, the next verb that you are going to use, that verb has to be in infinitive. Okay, good. I don't know, guys, if you have any question uh, with this. No sé si tenemos alguna duda, alguna pregunta hasta acá. No questions? Okay, perfect. If you don't have no any questions, guys, right, try to copy this if you think you will need it. And then I am going to stop sharing because we need to focus uh, on one activity that we didn't finish yesterday in the manual. So try to copy this. And when you finish, let me know, okay? Si gustan, copien los ejemplos y una vez terminen, me lo hacen saber. So we can move on, please. Just let me know when you finish. Ah, okay, good. Finish. Okay, perfect. Good. So if you guys have already finished, I'm going to stop sharing this. And then we are going to continue with the manual, okay? Now, if you remember, guys, yesterday, we were just discussing the first page of the manual, right? And that was page number nine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this to you because we didn't finish with this. Okay, nos quedamos acá en esta parte ayer. So we didn't uh, finish reading this part, right? Good, so it says, 
Read the mission statement of successful companies. It says, match them to the companies on the right. Compare your answers with a partner, it says. All right, so this is, listen up. This is the mission. This is the mission of a company that you got over here, guys. So what we are going to do is read the information and then we are going to try to get which company's mission is that about, okay? So Guillermo, could you please be so kind and help me out reading this mission? Yes, and uh, to be the most customer-centric company in the world where the people can find and discover anything they want to buy online. Ah, okay, good. Listen, guys. To be the most customer-centric company in the world where people can find and discover anything they want to buy online. Which company on the right do you think is that? Chevron, Starbucks, Amazon, or Nike? Amazon. Amazon. Exactly, right? So that's Amazon. Very good. Now... What about with the mission letter B, uh, Maritza? Can you please help me out reading? To be the global energy company most admired for admired? it, admired for its people, partnership, mm -hmm. and performance. Okay, very good. So in this case, guys, which company do you think is this? Chevron, Starbucks, or Nike? Chevron. Chevron? Yeah, that's the company. Very good. Chevron. That's the one. Okay, great. Now, let's move with uh, the following one. Adi? You there, Adi? To bring, to bring inspiration and in innovation. All right. Inspiration and innovation. And innovation to every athlete in the world. Athlete in the world. Athlete in the world. There you go. Which company do you think is that? Uh, Nike. In this case, is Nike, right? So that's the correct pronunciation of this brand in English, Nike. Okay, good. And what about the last one? Evelyn, help me out reading the last uh, mission that we got here. Yeah, to inspire uh, and nurture, nurture. The, nurture the human spirit one person, one group, and one may neighborhood at a time. Okay. And one neighborhood at a time. Okay. Thank at you, Evelyn. So in that case, it's the one that is missing over here, right? The last one, Starbucks. That's, that's the company, right? Very good. So basically, these guys are a couple of missions that these companies share right good now let's go down guys this is like what it really matters to me yesterday we were discussing this in the presentation so we are not going to stop that much in here but i want we to focus on these guys listen it says read the statements below correct the four mistakes related to the use of infinitives, all right? And it says compares the answers with a partner. En estas seis oraciones, tenemos cuatro errores, cuatro mistakes. Lo que básicamente ustedes van a hacer es identificar cuál es el error o básicamente agregarle la preposición to, ¿ok? Al verbo para convertirlo en infinitivo. De acuerdo a lo que hemos estado discutiendo. Tenemos un ejemplo acá. Check this out. Our mission, our vision 
is y luego tenía become. Entonces acá se le agregó el to, right? Para completar la oración y tenerlo de, de la manera correcta. To become the number one provider of office supplies in San Miguel. Ok, now, tratemos de encontrar los otros errores, please. Hay algunas de ellas que están correctas. Unas oraciones que están correctas, ok. So, try to do it, guys. And remember, guys, try to turn on your cameras, please. Y tratemos de mantener la cámara encendida, please. When you finish, guys, let me know, okay? If you have any question, please let me know, okay? Si tenemos alguna pregunta, me lo hacen saber. Finished, teacher. Okay, perfect, Rosalie. Revisen bien, a lo mejor algún verbo también está incorrecto. All right, and try to correct it. Let me know once you finish, guys. You finished, Teresa? Sí. Quiero okay. creer que está bien. <laughs> okay.
to review the class because I'm quite busy with you. Okay, guys, you finish? Terminaron? Finish teacher. Okay, excellent. Okay, I think we uh, can uh, start checking, guys, if you have them correct. Oh, you need to, to modify something. Okay, so number one is already done in there, right? So, Evelyn, could you please help me out reading number two? Our mission is to prove it 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 basic uh, mm -hmm. economic jobs to construction workers wherever they are. Okay, did you find any mistake or did you add something? Hello? Encontramos algún uh, uh, donde agregarle algo o algún error? No, ninguno. Para mí ninguno, ¿no? Everything está is okay. correcto. ¿Está correcto, Evelyn? Perdón. Sí, correcto. Ah, ok. Good. Yes, guys. This one is correct. Acá no necesitan agregar de nada, ok, porque esta, la número dos, está correcta. ¿Por qué está correcta? Porque después del verbo to be aquí, tenemos el infinite, right? Como en los ejemplos que estuvimos discutiendo ayer de la misión. Ok, good. Uh, let me see who else. Uh, let me see who else is in here. Teresa, could you please help me out reading number three? Yes, teacher. We aim to be the number one cleaning service provided for financial institutions. Okay, Teresa. Is everything okay there or you need to add something? I think that everything is okay. Exactly. In this case, everything in number three, guys, is correct. Todo está correcto en la número tres. Acá tenemos el infinitivo. To be. Ok, so, entonces ahí no necesitábamos modificarle absolutamente nada. Ok, good. What about number four, uh, Adi? We exit to bringing telecommunication solution for business. Businesses? Rural, uh, businesses in rural areas. In rural areas. Okay, there you go. Eh, ¿Algo que modificar, Eddie? Okay. Brining. Sería yo. Sería solo brine. El verbo. Sin el es... ING. Ajá. Okay, very good. So, ¿usted cree que debería ser así nada más? Ajá. You're correct, Adi. Ese es el mistake ahí. Ese es el error. That's correct. Okay. Ese verbo está con ing, guys. Y no puede ir con un ing si tenemos la preposición to. Entonces, ese es el error ahí. Simplemente hay que ponerlo en forma base. Right? And in this case is bring. We exist to bring telecommunication solutions for businesses in rural areas. Very good, Adi. Very good. Uh, next, let me see who can help me out. Guillermo, help me out reading the next one, please. We envision be leaders in the distribution of energy drinks in the regional market. Very good. So in that case, do you need to modify something? Necesitamos modificar algo ahí, mister? Mm, 
in the beginning, uh, we can change uh, our vision is to be leaders. Here? So you are suggesting that in this case over here, I can write down the preposition to over here like this. Yes. We ambition to be leaders in the distribution of energy drinks and the regional market like this. Yes, teacher. Okay, that's correct. Very good, Guillermo. Muy bien. Yeah, guys, in este caso, la preposición hacía falta acá junto con el verbo. Okay, great. Now, good evening, uh, good evening miss. All right, so welcome. Welcome back to this video Thank conference. You. Okay, great. Now, Katia, help me out reading the last one, please. My company's vision is to becoming the most perfect hair salon for adolescents. Ah, okay, good. Anything to modify, Katia? Yes, the verb. Become. Ah, okay, very good. In this case, you got the verb becoming, right? But in this case, it has to be become. become. Like this. Exactly. Thank you, Katia. My company's vision is to become, not becoming, to become the most preferred hair salon for adolescents. All right. So basically, those were the modifications, guys, that you had to do in these exercises, right? Básicamente, estos eran los, eh, las modificaciones a desarrollar en estas oraciones. Good. Now, I don't know if you modified them like this, but if you did it, so this is great, guys. Okay, that is great. So we have to compartir with this thing. And I'm going to stop sharing here. Give me a second, guys. I need to share with you something. All right, guys, can you see my screen? Pueden ver mi pantalla? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. So in this time, guys, we are going to continue with the second uh, topic that we're going to be discussing the rest of the night. And this topic is how to use ING forms after prepositions. In other words, en pocas palabras, ahora vamos a discutir sobre los gerundios, right? Ese es el nombre apropiado para esta estructura, right? So those, that, that, that's the appropriate name. So let's move on, guys. Let's just start with the class agenda. What's the most relevant that I have to show for the rest of the class? We had a review from previous class in manual activity. Esto es algo que acabamos de, de hacer, que acabamos de terminar. El pequeño review que hicimos de la clase anterior y la actividad pendiente del manual, right? So now, it says, use of ING verbs after preposition. Then we're going to have a conversation practice in the manual. After that, guys, we are going to be working in the manual. So basically... After that, we're going to do a series of exercises related to the topic in discussion in the manual. All right, so basically, this is the most relevant that we have for the rest of the night, guys. Now, let's continue. Vamos a continuar entonces. ING after prepositions. Check this out, guys. 
Doris, can you please help me out reading this? The use a verb. Yeah, please. Okay, the use a verb and plus and in ing after mm -hmm. preposition like for on off in the expression as we responsible for being charged off, be accountable for and committed to and dedicated to. Okay, very good, thank you. All right, so basically in here guys, what we're going to be doing is just to discuss ING forms after a couple of prepositions that in this case, we're going to use the prepositions like for, of, and expressions like be responsible for, be in charge of, be accountable for, be committed to, all right? All simply committed to and dedicated to, okay? So in this case, those are the ones that we are going to be talking about. So we have a series of examples related to this. Brian, help me out reading this one, please. I am responsible for sending email to my client. Ah, okay, very good, thank you. I am responsible for sending emails to my clients. What do you guys think is responsible for? Comprendemos esa expresión, guys? Be responsible for. ¿Qué quiere decir eso? Como el responsable de. Exactly. Ser responsable de. Okay. Eso es lo que significa be responsible for. Like in this case, I am responsible for sending emails to my clients. Soy responsable de enviar correos a mis clientes. Right? Good. Yeah. Now, another example, guys. Check this out. Susana, help me out reading, please. Okay, use a verb plus. Ah, no, no, no. The second, the second example. Uh, oh, okay, perdón. She's in charge of training the new employees. Ah, okay, very good. She is in charge of training the new employees. Okay, so in this case, guys, be in charge of. ¿Qué creen que significa? Be in charge of. Ella está a cargo de. Exactly, estar a cargo de. So in that case, that's what it means. Be in charge of of right estar a cargo de so in that case it says she is in charge of training the new employees ella está a cargo de capacitar o entrenar a los nuevos trabajadores right the new employees that's what it means that sentence okay great now the next one uh let me see who can help me out. Mm, I got a lot of people like listeners today. Jacqueline, help me out, Jacqueline. Hello. Hi. El párrafo tres. Eh, la, or eh, la oración, el ejemplo número tres. Okay. He is accountable for his new employee. Ah, okay, very good. And uh, what is accountable for, guys, in this case? What do you think it is? Mm. He is accountable for hiring new employees. What do you think that accountable means? Uh, para contratar. Uh -huh. Pero en that case, la expresión en sí, Cristina. 
What do you think it is? Él es el responsable de contratar a los nuevos empleados. Exactly. Be accountable for significa ser responsable de. Es lo mismo que be responsible for. ¿Ok? So it's basically the same thing. Esas expresiones son sinónimos. ¿Ok? For no también es sinónimo de de, al igual que of. Correcto, correcto. Okay. En, este, en este tipo de expresiones, for, sí, significa ser responsable de. Right, that's what it means. Okay. Nice. We have another one over here. Let me see who can help us read this. Carlos Rivas, can you please help us read this? She is dedicated to helping co-workers in his job. Ah, okay, very good. He is dedicated to helping co-workers in his job. All right. ¿Qué creen ustedes, guys, que significa dedicated to? Dedicado a. Dedicado a. That's correct. That's correct. Right. Dedicado a. Recuerden, después de estas expresiones, be in charge of, be accountable for, eh, be dedicated to, all right? Por lo general, el siguiente, la siguiente palabra tiene que ser un verbo. Y ese verbo tiene que ir en ing, ¿ok? En modo gerundio. Let's remember that, guys. Recordemos eso que a pesar que lleve la preposición to, en este caso, como el último ejemplo que tenemos ahí, dedicated to, el verbo tiene que ir en ing. ¿Ok? Y ustedes se preguntarán, pero si lleva to, entonces no es infinitivo. No, en este caso no es infinitivo. Y les voy a explicar por qué. Si ven ustedes acá, tenemos el verbo to be en la forma de is. Entonces, porque tenemos este verbo to be acá, por eso este, na, este verbo de acá lo colocamos en ing, ¿ok? Entonces, este to nada más es parte de este verbo, pero ya no funciona como un infinitivo, ¿ok? Ese es el motivo por el cual ese verbo se coloca en ing. Y no en forma base para formar un infinitivo. Ok. So try to keep that on mind guys. All right. Until here guys. Do you have any question? Hasta acá tenemos alguna pregunta. Teacher, o sea que to, en todos los ejemplos que están ahí. Eh, todos llevan el verbo to be. Exactly. Eso... La mayoría. Porque todos son expresiones usando el verbo to be. Ah, Al principio okay. es el ser responsable de, ser dedicado a. All right, so in that case, ese, ese, esa expresión de ser es el verbo to be. Right? Okay. Y recuerden, dependiendo del sujeto del que hablemos, así va a ser la forma del verbo to be que vamos a utilizar. Recuerden que el verbo to be es el verbo más irregular que tenemos en el inglés. Y en el presente simple tenemos tres formas. Recuerden. Am, is, and are. Estas son las tres formas del verbo to be en simple present. ¿Ok? Y estas están divididas con los pronombres. Recuerden, para I tenemos am. Para you, all right, tenemos are. Para he, she, it, ok, tenemos is. Y para las formas de los plurales, we, in that case, you and they, they. tenemos are. ¿Ok? Esta es la forma en cómo va. ¿Ok? Organizado los, los pronombres con las formas del de verbo to be. ¿Ok? Esto ya es un tanto sencillo para ustedes, pues algo que han venido viendo desde este módulo 1. Right? Y pues... El verbo to be lo venimos viendo desde que estábamos en la escuela, right? 
So I think something we got from there. Ya tenemos un background. Ahí. Good. So let's continue, guys. Eh, ¿Alguna pregunta más? Something else, guys? ¿Alguna duda? Recuerden, es mejor preguntar y no quedarnos con la duda. Right? So if you have any question, please let me know. Okay? Está todo claro, guys. Uh, teacher, um, cuando es, usamos el ING para, para estas expresiones, uh -huh. dedicado a eh, como de responsabilidad. Este, uh -huh. como dice el, el otro verbo que se que se ocupa, por decirlo así, que está en y conjugado en ING. Se traduce eh, ayudar, entrenar, enviar. Sí, Correcto. ando, ando, porque es un presente como continuo, algo así. Correcto. No. En este caso, listen, en este caso no es un continuo ni progresivo. Es un verbo nada más de modo, uh, esto se le conoce como gerundio y acá no está en forma progresiva, Rosalí, ¿ok? Acá no se le agrega okay, el ando, okay. ando, all right? sino que es como la forma base del verbo, se lee como la forma, o se traduce en este caso, como la forma base del verbo, ¿ok? Acá no crean que es un progresivo, acá nada más es una forma de modificación del verbo, pues no pueden ir después de ciertas expresiones, o en la mayoría de casos, después de una preposición, no puede ir un verbo en forma base. Siempre se tiene que modificar y casi siempre es hacia un gerundio. ¿Ok? Pero en la traducción se traduce de forma base. ¿Ok? Como en este caso, es en terms of training, es encargada de entrenar, right? No de entrenando. There you go. Good. So, eh, any other question, guys? Any other doubt? Todo claro. I have a teacher, I have a question. Yes, Juan, let's go. This, uh, tell me, this is used only in the affirmative form? No, it is in negatives also. Ya vamos a pasar a las formas negativas. Okay, right okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can use negative statements as well. If you got positives, so then you have negatives, right? Good question, Juan. So we're going to move on, like, right now with that. Ah, uh, you see, in this case, ing after prepositions to create negative statements, right? And we got expressions like this. Check this out. It says, okay, creo que sí, estoy hablando mucho. Van a ayudar a leer. Doris, help me out reading, please. Just adds not after the verb the verb be. As in the following examples. Okay, thank you. Ta -da -da. So you got the first example over here. Check this out, guys. This is a negative statement, okay? This is a negative statement. Carlos Enrique, help me out reading the first example, please. I am not responsible for arriving late to work. Ah, okay, very good. I am not responsible for arriving late to work. ¿Dónde colocamos la forma negativa? Sencillo. Siempre, escuchen esto, siempre una forma negativa cuando usamos el verbo to be en una expresión va después del verbo to be. ¿Ok? Siempre recuerden eso. Una forma negativa, en este caso la palabra not, Siempre va a ir después de el verbo to be. Okay? In a negative expression. Like in this case, right? I am not responsible for arriving late to work. Ah, no soy responsable de llegar tarde a trabajar. De hecho, sí, pero en esta expresión no. Okay, good. So, check out this, this uh, other example that we got over here, guys. Uh, let me see. Jacqueline, help me out reading, please. Um, 
He is, he is now in charge of moving to new material. Okay, thank you. He is not in charge of moving the new material, right? So, él no está a cargo de mover el nuevo material, right? O el material nuevo. Okay, so that's a negative statement, right, Juan? You see, después del verbo to be one, you have to use the word not to make negative statements, okay? Yeah. Perfect. Juan, by the way, help me out reading this one. She's not accountable for writing the reports. Wow, oh, okay, very good. So she's not accountable for writing the reports, it says, right? Uh, it's basically the same thing like if you say, guys, she is not responsible for writing the reports, right? Basicamente es like, ella no es responsable de escribir el reporte. So that's the way how we got it over here. Ah, and we got another one over here. Let me see. Cristina, help me a reading, please. Okay. He is not dedicated to doing a good job. Ah, okay, good. He is not dedicated to doing a good job, right? Very good. So all of these expressions, guys, in here are in negatives, right? So this ones are negatives, remember that. Good, guys, I will give you time for you to copy the sentences. And when you finish, let me know, okay? Cuando termine, me lo hacen saber. Okay. Perfect. By the way, guys, eh, por cierto, todos tienen acceso ya a la plataforma. Eh, revisaron que no tengan ningún inconveniente al poder acceder. O hay alguien acá que, que tenga problemas con el acceso a la plataforma. Everything okay? Okay, perfect. That is cool, guys. <laughs> Let me know when you finish so we can move on. Alright guys, eh, no sé qué les parece eh, y creo que para poder a, a avanzar un poco más eh, rápido, no sé si les parece bien eh, que les comparta la presentación al, en el grupo de WhatsApp. Yes, teacher. So de ese modo yes. podemos avanzar. Podemos yeah, avanzar un poco so más rápido and you, you, you will have there, right? The presentation. Solo que Thank me, you so acuerdan, much. me acuerdan, por favor, ¿ok? Porque a veces se me, se me apaga el foco <laughs> y se me olvida. All right, so let's continue. Ok, so let's check this out. Good. Questions and answer examples, it says. Good. Maritza, help me out reading this question, please. Who is responsible? Responsible. Responsible. Who is responsible? Responsible for doing the chores at home. Okay, very good. Who is responsible for doing the chores at home? Uh, in this case, do you know, guys, what is chores? ¿Saben qué significa la palabra chores? Deberes. Exactly. O en este caso, tareas de la casa, right? Como barrer, trapear, lavar, 
Eh, ok, like, task like this. Ok, ¿quién es responsable de hacer las tareas de la casa? Ok, so check this out. This is the answer. So, Doris, help me out reading the answer, please. Doris, you got the microphone off. Sorry. <laughs> My son is responsible for doing the chores mm -hmm. at home. The chores at home. Okay, very good. My son is responsible for doing the chores at home. Very good. Ah, mi hijo es responsable de hacer las tareas de la casa. Okay, good. Check out this um, extra example. Brian, help me out. Who are you responsible for training in the company? Ah, okay. Who are you responsible for training in the company? Okay, good. So check this out, the answer. Uh, uh, um, Rosalie? I am responsible for training the new employees. Ah, okay, very good. So it says I am responsible for training the new employees. So these ones are general questions and answers, right? Good. So we got one last question. Uh, Ali, help me a reading. Okay, teacher, who is in charge of going to the supermarket? Supermarket. Supermarket. Okay, very good. Who is in charge of going to the supermarket? Okay, uh, Teresa, help me out reading the answer. My wife is in charge of going to the supermarket. Okay, thank you, Teresa. All right, so basically this is just a couple of questions that we can uh, ask related to this structure, right? Entonces, estas son algunas preguntas que podemos elaborar utilizando la, las expresiones, right, que previamente hemos estado viendo. Good. Any question with this? ¿Alguna duda? ¿Alguna pregunta, guys? acerca de cómo crear preguntas con esta estructura o todo está claro everything clear like my background todo tan claro como mi fondo de pantalla yes <laughs> no ya claro teacher ok perfect good so let's continue guys let's continue Right. Ok, now, estos eran algunos ejemplos de pregunta. Ahora, les traigo unas a ustedes. Ok, check this out. What are you responsible for? What are you in charge of? And the last one, what are you dedicated to? Tres preguntitas para que nos divirtamos, guys. Quiero que me le den respuesta usándolo de manera personal, a título personal, ¿ok? What are you responsible for? ¿De qué es responsable usted? ¿Ok? Ya sea que me mencione algo en su trabajo o a, a, en su casa, ¿ok? Let's do it. In my case, guys, si me dieran a título de responder la primera, yo diría, I am responsible for teaching English to the basic group number three, right? So that will be one responsibility that I have. So, give an answer to the other ones. Demo la respuesta a cada una de ellas. When you finish, let me know.
And remember, if you have questions, let me know, please. Let me know when you finish, guys. Finished, teacher. Okay, perfect, Rosalie. Let's wait for your classmates to finish. Finished, teacher. Okay, good, Guillermo. Somebody else is finished.
I'll make this so quiet. Come on, guys. Come on. Are you about to finish? Ya casi terminamos. And Ellie is drinking coffee just to keep up awake. Para mantenerse despierta. <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. Ah, okay, good, Evelyn. Finish teacher. Ok, perfect. All right, guys, creo que sí, a la mayoría está terminado, así que vamos a comenzar con la primera pregunta. What are you responsible for? Hey, Juan. Juan Fuentes. What are you responsible for? Yeah. Um, I am responsible for the servers working well. I am responsible for, y luego de for, tiene que ir el verbo en ING, mister. Uh, for the servers working. Mm, necesitamos oh. un verbo adicional. We need a, an additional verb in there. I am responsible for... Yeah. You you can use the verb keep. For example, you can use this. I am responsible for keeping the servers working. Okay. Keeping is like, ah, soy responsable de mantener a los servidores funcionando, ok, o trabajando, appropriately, apropiadamente, ok, o any kind of compliment that you might get. But after four, tenemos que tener un verbo, ok, para dar la función del gerund in this case, o the ing form, ok. Ok. Perfect. Good. Juan. Quiero que le haga esa pregunta o le lea esa pregunta a Doris. And Doris will answer. Doris, uh, are you responsible for keeping the server working? No, 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 no. The, the, oh. the question, uh, la, la misma pregunta ah. que yo le hice. Esa es su respuesta, ¿ok? Ok, uh, Doris, what are, what are you responsible for? Ok, responsible good. For. good. I am responsible in my work. To, to the check. To the check? Yes, yes. I am responsible for checking in my job. Okay. Okay, I am responsible for checking in my job. That's the way, that's the way you should, you should write it down, okay? Okay. Perfect. Read the question, Doris. Read the question uh, to Katia so she will answer. Okay. What What are you responsible for? Okay. What are you responsible for? Thank you, Doris. I am responsible for cooking dinner every day. Okay, very good. I am responsible for cooking dinner every day. Nice. Okay, Katia, now read the question to Evelyn. Okay. I am responsible for taking product. I am responsible for taking product. Okay, very good. Thank you, Evelyn. Now. Read the question to Guillermo, so he will answer. Evelyn? Guillermo, Yes. 
what are you responsible for? I am responsible for calling clients every morning. Okay, I am responsible for calling clients every morning. Very good. All right, Guillermo, read the question to Cristina. Cristina, what are you responsible for? I am responsible for preparing a list of students who are late to class. Wow, okay, very good. I remember when I used to do that. <laughs> okay, good, Cristina. Now, read the question and Ali will answer. Okay, Ali, what are you responsible for? Good. I am a teach class of your geography and history spine in secondary. Let's make a short modification. Porque ahí se le olvidó colocarme la ING. I am responsible for teaching. Teaching. Okay. Entendido. Teaching. Okay, very good. Y de ahí todo Please. lo demás está bien. Okay. <clears throat> ¿A quién le pregunto? Okay. <laughs> Brian. Brian, what are you responsible for? Yes. I am responsible on my work for evaluate, eval, um, for evaluar, ¿cómo se llama? Evaluating. Uh, in, in this case, evaluating, but with ING, with ING, Brian. Evaluating. Uh -huh. Evaluating. Store, así. Ok. Store, like, like tiendas o... o... En tiendas, eh, digamos tiendas Dollar City. Ah, ok, stores. Very good. Ok, good. Thank you, Brian. Now, help me out reading the question and Jacqueline will answer. ¿A quién, perdón? Jacqueline. Uh, Jacqueline, what are you responsible for? I am responsible for review documents. For reviewing documents. Document. Ok, sería más o menos el verbo así, le quedaría así. Reviewing. Right? Yes. Ok, perfect. So Jacqueline, read the question and uh, who's missing? Maritza will answer. Maritza, what are you responsible for? Responsible for. Responsible for? Good. I'm responsible, responsible for uh, reviewing invoice in my job. Ah, job. Reviewing the invoice in my job. Okay, very good, Maritza. Now, read the question and uh, da, da, who's missing? Who's missing? Um, these people are from Oyentes. Carlos Rivas will answer. Okay. I, are, I am responsible. For documenting processes. For documenting processes. Okay, good, Carlos. Read your uh, read the question, Carlos, and Carlos Enrique will answer. So yo mismo, teacher, solo con, porque tengo problemas con el audio, estoy desde el teléfono What? y de la compu. Ay, sí, es cierto. Del... <laughs> Ajá, tengo, por eso estoy conectado desde aquí. Entonces se va a preguntar solito y se va a responder solito desde otra vez. No, okay. no, no, no. No, 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 si no yo uso, me, me respondo porque tenía otra. No voy a responder yo solito, teacher. <risa> What oh, are no, you no, responsible no. for? Uh, pay, pay attention to English class. Uh, I am responsible for paying attention. Paying I attention. Am, I am responsible pay attention to English class. 
Okay, for paying attention to the English class. Good, good. Good answer, Carlos. Okay, now okay, I want you to uh, read the question and Teresa will answer. Teresa, what are you responsible for? I'm responsible for recording video interview. Okay, very good. Very good. Now, Teresa, help me a reading. And Doris, did you participate already? Ya participó. Oh, yes. yes. Mm. Ah, pues ya no pregunto. Mm -hmm. Será que sí. Let me see. Rosalí, did you participate already? No. Ah, okay, good. Read the question, Teresa. Rosalí will answer. My, Rosalí, what are you responsible for? Good. I am resp responsible for cleaning the house every day. Ah, okay, very good. Very good. Now, who's missing, guys? ¿Quién falta? Los demás están como oyentes. Da, 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 da. Yeah, good. Rosalí, read the question and I will answer. Teacher, what um, are you responsible for? I am responsible for teaching English to all of you guys. Okay, very good. Listen. Vamos a hacer algo con las demás oraciones, con las demás respuestas. Porque si necesito avanzar con lo del manual, oh. si no me van a colgar. No, let's, let's do something. Me van a escribir esas oraciones que ustedes hicieron, las respuestas de la 2 y la 3, me las van a escribir al grupo de WhatsApp, ¿ok? Nada más pónganle número 2, respuesta, número 3, respuesta en un solo mensaje. Uh, después de la clase las voy a revisar, ¿ok? Good, so that way I am going to move out. De ese modo vamos a avanzar en esta parte acá. Ok, if you got time, send it there and then we are going to check that after class. Now, because I need to move on with this, guys. Porque si necesitamos avanzar acá. And uh, I need to show you these guys. Ahora bien. Una vez terminado esta parte, guys, necesito que se vayan al manual on page 11. Let's go to the manual on page 11. Let me see. Uh, yeah. I think this is the page that we're going to be working on. No, give me one second. Uh, the values. We're going to see the values later on. Now, we're going to go to page 13. Vamos a, a saltar a la página 13. Page 13. Esta página 11 y 12 la vamos a dejar para el viernes. O posiblemente el lunes. This is like the topic. It's like weird, you see. I'm going to share the, the manual. To you guys let's go straight to here guys to this page all right and if you see over here guys we have a short conversation okay in here if you take a look in here it is applied what we were discussing right so in here i got the expressions be responsible for Right, be responsible to, uh, in charge of, and so on. So in here, guys, uh, we have a conversation between Jessica and Roxana, right? And it says, it says in here, listen to your teacher, read the conversation, then practice with a partner. So we're going to do something similar to what we did yesterday with the conversation that we practiced yesterday. So it says, Jessica, hi, Roxana. Hi, Roxana. Welcome to Rex. Welcome to Rex. My name is Jessica. My name is Jessica. I'm, listen up. I'm the industrial safety 
engineer. I'm the industrial safety engineer. It says Roxana. Thanks, Jessica. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Jessica says, my department is responsible. My department is responsible for keeping the safety of the plant. For keeping the safety of the plant. Roxana says, I see. I see. I'll be part. I'll be part. Listen up. Of the maintenance. Of the maintenance department. Will I be responsible to you? Will I be responsible to you? Jessica says, great, great. Our departments work together. Our departments work together. But in, listen up, but the maintenance, the maintenance shift is in church is in charge of directing of directing your department your department you'll you'll acá la pronunciación de este es como un you normal you normal agregándole el sonido de una l al final you'll you'll Okay, you'll be responsible to him. You'll be responsible to him. Roxana says, thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. May I call you if I need help? May I call you if I need help? And Jessica says, sure. Sure. There you go. Guys, from this short conversation, did you have any question with the vocabulary? ¿Tenemos alguna duda con relación al vocabulario de esta pequeña conversación? ¿Alguna palabra que nos cueste pronunciar or something like that, guys? Teacher, what is the meaning chef? Okay, it says, but the maintenance chief, chief is jefe, encargado. All right. Teacher, ¿qué significa que lleve yo con L? Okay, con L. Okay. Uh -huh. So, básicamente, eso es la con contraction de you will. So you contract you apostrophe L L you. Okay, thank you. Okay, recuerde, you will es básicamente la forma para crear el futuro. Right? That's what it is. Any other question related to this, guys? Yes, teacher. And in the conversation, the um, Roxana, uh -huh. one, two, three, four, um, paragraph. This the Roxana, el Jessica Roxana, Jessica Roxana, the second of Roxana. The I see, I be uh -huh. part of the. Do, 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 do. What is it? What is it? What is it? Maintenance. Ah, maintenance. Maintenance. Uh -huh, the pronunciation. 
maintenance. Okay. Okay, there you go. Maintenance department. Departamento de mantenimiento. Maintenance. All right, guys. Any other question? Doubt? Pronunciation issue? No, teacher. Perfect. So, if you don't have any other question, guys, vamos a ir a practicar esta pequeña conversación por unos tres minutos con un compañero. Luego venimos acá y lo hacemos en la general uh, room like we did yesterday. Pero necesito saber quiénes están activos para la participación porque no quiero incluir a los que están como oyentes y luego no participen con los que eh, podemos estar ahí. All right. So, Pedro is like a listener, está como oyente. All right, for me, no problem. Huh? Okay, Juan. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, so Teresa. Susana, can you participate? Yes, you sure. Perfect. Carlos, yeah, Carlos, si puede. Graciela, está como oyente. Kenia, como oyente. And Claudia, Marcela. Ah, está como oyente también. Ok, good. So, ahora sí, yo sé quiénes están como oyentes para no tener inconvenientes. So, I'm going to stop sharing that, guys. And uh, give me a second. I'm going to recreate the groups. Just for us to go to work. Okay, so we got Doris and Evelyn. Give me one second. Okay, guys, let's open up the breakout rooms and let's go to practice that for a couple of minutes. Then we're going to come back in here. teacher. Hello. Ya estaba practicando y me sacó de una sala. <risa> lo siento, lo que pasa es que tenía tres en donde había puesto a Juan y tenía yeah. tres ahí donde estaba usted. Entonces, oh, okay. para que practiquen de mejor manera acá los dos juntitos, por eso mejor okay. los, los dividí, ¿ok? Para que It's los okay. grupos estén de dos. No okay. problem. Thank you, teacher. Yes, ok. Ok, Susana. Eh... Thank you, Jessica. Nice to meet you. My department is responsible for keeping the safety, the safety, safety, the safety of the plant. 
I see. I'd be part of the maintenance department. Why it be responsible to you? Great. Our department work together, but the maintenance chief is in charge of directing your department. You'll be responsible to him. Thank you, Jessica. May I call you if I need help? Sure. Okay. Muy bien. Volvemos al cambio. Volvemos al cambio. Sí, vamos a ir. Ok. Ok. Va usted Jessica y Roxana. Ok. Hi, Roxana. Welcome to REST. My name is Jessica. I am the Industrial Safety. Sí, así. Vaya, ahora vamos a, a, a cambiar. Va usted es Jessica. Usted empieza. ¿no? Hi, Rosa. Hi, Roxana. Welcome to Rex. My name is Jessica. I am an industrial safety engineer. 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 Thanks, Jessica. Nice to meet you. My department is responsible for keeping the safety of the plan. I see. I'll be part of the maintenance department. Will I be responsible to you? Great. Our department work together, but the maintenance chief is charge of directing your department. You'll be responsible to him. Thank you, Jessica. Together, um, but the maintenance, maintenance chief in the shares of direct, directing direct. the di directing directing uh -huh. the the department you will be responsible to him. Yes. Thank you, Jessica. My I called you if you need help. We need help. Sure. Sure. Hi, Roxana. Welcome to Rex. My name is. No problem. Okay. And it's your step. Hi, Roxana. Welcome to Rex. My name is Jessica. I'm the industrial safety engineer. Thank you, Jessica. Nice to meet you. My department is responsible for keeping the safety of the plan. I see I require us to maintenance department. Will 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 I be responsible to you? Great. Our departments work together, but the maintenance chief is in charge of directing your department. You'll be responsible to him. Thank you, Jessica. My I call you his if new help. If I need. If I need. Help. Nepal, you, you, you is a new help? Yeah, sure. There you go. So you have, I, uh, how many times have you practiced? ¿Ya practicaron lo suficiente? You feel like, like four times. Uh -huh. Okay, I mean, that's cool, that's cool. Creo que ya es suficiente, así que vámonos. Quiero escucharlos en la sección principal. See you there.
All right, so let's wait for the other ones to get joined. No sé por qué siempre se tardan. <laughs> Espera que la aplicación lo saque. Ana, they are coming. I think everybody has already participated at least three or four times. So that would be cool for everybody. Okay, perfect. So everybody's joining again. So I'm gonna share this and let's start. Carlos Enrique, who were you practicing with? Okay. ¿Con quién estuvo practicando? Con Adi. Okay, good. Can you start with Adi? Yes. Okay. Um, Carlos. ¿Cuál quiere ser usted? Roxana. Okay, yo soy mm -hmm. Jessica. Hi, Roxana. Welcome to Rex. My name is Jessica. I'm the industrial safety engineer. Thank you, Jessica. Nice to meet you. My department is responsible for keeping the safety of the plant. I see. I will be part of the maintenance department. Why are we responsible to you? Great. Our departments work together, but the maintenance chief is in charge of directing your department. You'll be responsible to him. Thank you, Jessica. May I call you if I need help? Sure. Okay, very good. Thank you, Adi and Carlos. You did it excellent. Now, keeping up, uh, let me see with another pair. Guillermo and Jacqueline, let's go. Hi, Roxana. Welcome to Race My Night. It's Jessica. I'm still industrial for safety. Safety? Safety engineer. 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 Good. Thanks, Jessica. Nice to meet you. My department is responsible for keeping the safety, safety, <laughs> safety, safety of the plan. I see. I'll be part of the maintenance department. Will I be responsible uh, to to you? Okay. Our department work together. Book to maintenance chase is in charge of directive to department. You, I will be responsible to him. To him. Thank you, Jessica. May I call you if I need help? Sure. Okay, sure. There you go. Thank you, Jacqueline and Guillermo. Now, Juan. Who were you working with? Roxana Carolina. Okay, yes. good. Let's go. I'm ready. Where's yours? I'm Jessica. Hi, Roxana. Welcome to Rex. My name is Jessica. I'm the industrial safety engineer. Jessica, nice to meet you. My department is responsible for keeping the safety of the plant. See, I will be part of the maintenance department. Will I be responsible to you? Great. Our departments work together, but the maintenance chief in the charge of directing the department, you will be responsible to him. You, Jessica, may I call you? If I need help. Sure. Okay, very good. Thank you, Juan and Susana. You did it excellent. Now, let me see who's next. Rosalie, who are you working with? In with Teresa. Okay, let's go. Oh, let me see. Uh, ¿Quién comienza, Rosalie? Um, you. Bye, bye, Sabi. Gracias. Hi, 
usted o yo, perdón. <risa> usted comienza. Ok, <risa> perdón, perdón por ese vacío. Hi Roxana, welcome to Rex. My name is Jessica. I'm the industrial safety engineer. Thank you, Jessica. Nice to meet you. My department is responsible for keeping the safety of the plant. I see. I'll be part of the maintenance department. Will, will I be responsible to you? Great. Our departments work together, but the maintenance chief is in charge of directing your department. You'll be responsible to him. Thank you, Jessica. May I call you? If I need help? Sure. No se escucha, teacher. Tiene el micrófono apagado. Teacher. No it happens, escuchamos. it happens. And, y estaba con toda la energía y hablando solito. But anyways, that's part of it. Thank you, Rosalie and Teresa. You did it excellent. <laughs> ah, that's funny. That's funny. Okay, good. Katia. Let's go, Katia. Who were you working with? Okay, Maritza. With Maritza. Okay. Yes. Hi, Roxana. Welcome to Rex. My name is Jessica. I'm the industrial safety engineer. Thanks, Jessica. Nice to meet you. My department is responsible for keeping the safety of the plant. I see. I'll be part of the maintenance department. Will I be responsible, responsible to you? Great. Our department work together, but the maintenance chief is the change of direction, your department. Uh, you'll be responsible to him. Thank you, Jessica. My, I may I'll call you if I need help? Sure. If I need help? Okay, sure. Thank you, Katia and Maritza. Now, Doris. Who were you working with, Doris? With Evelyn. Okay, good. Let's go. Hey, Doris. Okay. Hi, Roxana. Welcome to Rex. My name is Jessica. I'm the industrial safety safety engineer. Safety engineer. Thanks, Jessica. Nice to meet you. My department is responsible for keeping the safety of the plant. I see it will be part of the maintenance department. Will it be responsible to you? Great. How our department work together, but the maintenance chief in the share of directing your disclaimer, you'll be responsible to him. Thank you, Jessica. My, I called you if he need help. Sure. All right, may I call you if I need help? Sure, it says. Thank you, Doris. And uh, Emily. Nice. Who else is missing, guys? Alguien más que me se me esté escapando? Algún grupo de... Who? Cristina and Brian. Brian, right? There you go. Let's go, guys. Brian? Okay. Hi, Roxana. Welcome to Rex. My name is Jessica. I'm the industrial safety engineer. Thanks, Jessica. Nice to meet you. My department is responsible for keeping the safety of the plant. I see. It'll be part of the maintenance department. Will I be responsible to you? Great. 
Our departments work together, but the maintenance <clears throat> chief is in charge of directing your department. You'll be responsible to him. Thank you, Jessica. May I call Joe if I need help? Help. Sure. Sure. Okay. Very good. So thank you, Brian and Christina. Okay. Good. So I think you uh were the last participants in here. Now, guys, let's answer these questions together. Okay. Vamos a responder estas cuatro preguntas todos juntos. De acuerdo a la... Ok, de acuerdo a esto que dice acá. Discuss the answers to the questions below. Compare your answers with another pair. For example, who is responsible for keeping the safety of the personnel in the plant? De acuerdo a lo leído. Who is responsible for keeping the safety of the personnel in the plant? Mm, the... Is the safety, safety engineer. The safety engineer. Yes, my department. The, the, the industrial safety engineer. Okay, pero. Ajá, ajá. Okay. Jessica. Okay. My si Jessica, Jessica is. is. Jessica is. Exactly. Oh, Jessica is. Responsible exactly. for keeping. Exactly, exactly. And in that case, como menciona who, en este caso vamos a poner Jessica. Very good. Now, the next question, guys. Who is in charge of directing the maintenance personnel? Who is in charge of directing the maintenance personnel? Jessica Church Chief. Jessica. Are you sure? Jessica Mantinis is Chief. Mm, Roxana oh. Sera. Roxana Sera. También encargada. Mm. Are you sure? Roxana? Mm, Jessica. Eh, y Roxana Chief. Listen, who is in charge of directing the maintenance personnel? The maintenance chief. ¿Quién es el encargado Las de dirigir dos. el personal de mantenimiento? Roxana. Eh, the floor manager. Roxana, be responsible. Mm. Listen, Roxana dice, I'll be part of the maintenance department. Seré parte del... Departamento de Mantenimiento. Ahora bien, dice acá, Will I be responsible to you? Estaré a cargo de ti. Dice Jessica, Great. Our department works together. Nuestro departamento, nuestros departamentos trabajan juntos. But the maintenance chief is in charge of directing your department. Pero el jefe de mantenimiento estará a cargo de tu Departamento. ¿Y cuál es el departamento? Maintenance Department. So, en este caso es The Maintenance Chief. The Maintenance Chief that is the one that is in charge of directing the maintenance personnel. So, in number two, the maintenance chief. Okay, good. What about number three? It says, who is Roxana responsible to? Okay, acá no es, no significa quién es responsable Roxana, no. Aquí es de quién Roxana es responsable. Right, quien es quien dirige a Roxana? Um, maintaining chief. The maintenance chief. Aquí va de nuevo. Okay, the maintenance chief. Very good. And the last one, la última. 
Look at the organizational chart above, it says. Who are the safety engineer? Listen, who are the safety engineer and the maintenance chief responsible to? Who are the safety engineer and the maintenance chief responsible to? ¿Quién es encargado de él? Is the floor manager. Who is it according to this? Exactly, the floor manager. Okay. Es el encargado de ellos dos, the, the safety engineer and the maintenance shift, right? The floor manager. Es el encargado. Okay, so in here, write down the floor manager, right? O sea, el encargado de pizza, right? Okay. Uh, for this, guys, eh, para este tipo de actividades, creo que sería conveniente, bueno, si puede, right? Si puede, de que impriman las páginas del manual que, que, que se trabajarán, eh, que se, se han estado trabajando y se trabajarán a futuro. Por lo menos la, con las cuales van a ser las actividades para que se les haga más sencillo el poder contestar las, las actividades, right? So, las pueden imprimir y así les resulta más fácil hacer este tipo de actividades, ¿ok? All right, guys. Para mañana, vamos a continuar con este pequeño chart que tenemos acá, right? Y vamos a contestar estas, bueno, preguntas. Y vamos a completar, de hecho, las preguntas y las respuestas relacionadas, no siempre, a esta estructura, ING after prepositions, ¿ok? Ahora no lo haremos porque, basically, the time is out, ¿ok? Y no los quiero tener después de las 10 porque se, se me van a enojar, así que no. No quiero que Ana Cristina se me enoje. Right, Ana? No, no, Cristina. I'm sorry, Cristina. Cristina. <laughs> ok, good. So, I'm going to go uh, ahead and pass the attendance list. And that's going to be everything for tonight, guys, ¿ok? Give me one second. So, Adi Beatriz. Present. Okay. Uh, Ana Cristina. Present, teacher. Good. Cristina, you are going to stay with me in the 10 minutes feedback today, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brian Aldair. Present. Okay, nice. Carlos Antonio. Carlos, Antonio, Elías. Tengo varios Carlos, pero ningún Antonio. Okay, so he's not here. So let's move. Uh, Carlos Enrique. Present teacher. Okay, good. Claudia Marcela. Claudia, okay, so Claudia is... Is it here? No, she's not here. Okay, Doris Alejandra. Present. Okay, good. Uh, Evelyn Karina. Present. Teacher, no sé si me mencionó al principio porque casi como que no me escuchaba o algo así, creo. No, sí, eh, le, la, la alcancé a escuchar. Ah, no, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, Graciela Saraí. Graciela, okay, so she is not here. No problem. Guillermo Eduardo. Present teacher. Okay, nice. Uh, Irma del Tránsito. I thought she was here, but... No. Okay. Uh, Jacqueline Yvonne. Present teacher. Okay. Este, Excellent. Cuando me mencionó al inicio, estaba conectada, pero no me funcionaba el micrófono. Ah, ok. <laughs> no sé okay. por qué. Ok, yeah. no problem. Igual le puse asistencia al principio. Ok, thank Bien. you. All right. Juan Carlos Fuentes. I am here, teacher. Perfect. 
Okay. We have a lot of Carlos in this module. Estamos, está invadido de Carlos este módulo. And I'm Juan Carlos as well, brother. So, dominant song here. Okay. Uh, Katia Maria. Okay, okay. It's the present teacher. Okay. Okay, good. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> no problem. Uh, Kenya Maricela. Present. Okay, very good. Maritza Elizabeth. Present. Okay, nice. Uh, Marvin Alexander. Marvin. Yusefa. Okay. Me parecía que estaba acá. Pedro Rigoberto. Present. Okay, nice. Rosalí Ivonne. Present. Nice. Susana Carolina. Present teacher. Okay, good. And the last one, Teresa Noemi. Present. Okay. Ni porque tengo apellido Ángel. ¿Ah? <ríe> Ni porque tengo apellido Ángel, le digo. Toda Ángel. mi vida fui la número uno o dos de la lista. <ríe> A ver, permítame. Da, 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 da. No, lo que pasa es que ahorita... Por, tengo... el, por el nombre. Lo que pasa es que ahorita, ahorita como yo no soy el encargado de crear la lista, pero por lo visto tengo un desorden en la lista. No, 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 teacher, no tenga que, problema con así eso. Así que en, la, en, la, en, en, en los días, eh, <risa> supongo no, que pero no días, se los, por eso. los encargados lo van a modificar y que cree, este va a ser la primera. Ay, no. <risa> no, teacher, perdón, es que lo que pasa es que aquí siempre nos ordenan en orden alfabético por nombre. Ajá, eso Porque pasa. Porque siempre hemos tenido ese orden, siempre eh, las Anas <ríe> o Adis son las primeras y nosotras somos las primeras. Ah, now I got it, I got it now. Ok, Ajá. cool, entonces, sí, sorry, man. sorry Teresa. <ríe> Tengo que esperarlos a todos. <ríe> exactly, exactly. Gracias. Ok, all right guys, it was a pleasure to be here with you in the second video conference. And I will wait for you tomorrow, okay? I hope you have a wonderful night, guys. Espero que tengan una excelente noche. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you. Evelyn está bien pensativa. O así quedó ya. Congelada. <laughs> I think she got stuck. <laughs> ya la vamos a ayudar. Vamos a ver. Like this. Okay, uh, Cristina. Okay, so basically, uh, this, this couple of minutes, remember, is just for us to clarify any question, any doubt that you can have related to this class or yesterday's class. So I don't know if you have any question, Cristina. Eh, he estado haciendo, teacher, las actividades de la plataforma. Ajá. Bueno, eh, yo creería, teacher, que, que voy entendiendo bastante bien. Ah, pero es cool, es eh, cool. Sí, eh, quizás ahí solo hay, hay bastante vocabulario nuevo, ah. ¿verdad? Eh, mm -hmm. Técnico también. Yes. Eh, que por eso hay algunas palabras que no, que no logro, lo que, que le pido que, que me repita, ¿verdad? Exactly. Y siempre, y siempre que tenga dudas con una palabra, no se quede con esa duda, siempre pregunte, porque eso es bueno. No se preocupe, teacher, que yo no tengo pena para eso. Excelente. Eso, así me gusta que sean todos. Y ya tengo impreso yo el manual, ahí ya estoy Excelente. trabajando yo el manual. Excelente. Y... Es... Uh -huh. y... Quizás solamente eh, algunos, no sé si vamos a retomar, me imagino que sí, ¿verdad? Algunos eh, temas quizás del módulo 2, ¿verdad? Porque ya el, el, quizá la última semana, bueno, unos días antes de vacaciones de, de, de Semana Santa uh -huh. y después ya para finalizar, uh -huh. este, 
pues ya solo me quedaba de, de oyente nada más, ¿verdad? Entonces, este, ya, por ejemplo, el, el último contenido de, del can, del modo, modo, como, no sé, una forma que tenía como doble significado, uh -huh. o intención, intencional, en el uso de, de esa, de ese verbo, no, no logré, teacher, este, comprenderlo bien, pues, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Sí, después me puse a ver el video de, de la clase, uh -huh. ¿verdad? Pero, este, soy sincera, no, no, no logré, no logré comprenderlo muy bien, ¿verdad? Y, este, eso, nada más, ¿verdad? Y que, no sé, quizás pedirle algún tips para, para mejorar en, en, en pronunciación, uh -huh. en, bueno, para sí. ir, ir como, eh, ya, podré, ya puedo eh, comprender un poco más cuando me preguntan algo, Exacto. ¿verdad? Puedo eh, contestar con oraciones sencillas, a que no, era, no, no, no lo podían hacer desde el principio, ¿verdad? pero ya. Exacto, exacto. No, y como este es un proceso que poco a poco se va logrando, right Entonces, bueno, el consejo que yo le podría dar es que con el vocabulario que usted tiene, trate de practicarlo lo más que se pueda. ¿Por qué? Eso inclusive cuando tal vez usted no tenga con quién practicarlo, trate de aunque sea de, de leer oraciones, escribir oraciones y leerlas fuerte, no solo mentalmente, sino eh, fuerte para que también usted se vaya acostumbrando, su lengua se vaya acostumbrando a las articulaciones de las palabras. ¿Por qué? Porque no es lo mismo leerlo mentalmente que ya leerlo verbalmente, right Porque ya usted ahí ya está aplicando eh, su habilidad de speaking. Entonces, eso es bastante esencial. ¿Por qué? Porque de esa manera poco a poco vamos ganando fluidez al momento de hablar. Entonces, y eso es lo que realmente nosotros vamos buscando, fluidez. Créame que... Eh, aunque tengamos corto vocabulario y nos haga eh, bien extenso, pero si practicamos lo que vamos aprendiendo, si vamos leyendo oraciones, haciendo oraciones, right? mm -hmm. practicando, eh, si se puede con alguien en su caso, cuando usted pueda, eh, tiene a Adi que puede practicar con ella. Tal vez en algún momento, mm -hmm. un par de minutos, algunas de sus preguntas, respuestas se pueden... Eh, hacer las unas a las otras y eso les ayudará de mucho ok, uh, más que toda la fluidez y también el, el listening, right entonces hay muchos que solo se enfrascan en querer aprender vocabulario, vocabulario ir, ir, ir aprendiéndolo pero sucede algo que si usted solo se enfoca en aprender vocabulario pero no lo practica o no lo pone en práctica en oraciones Pasa uh -huh. que usted entiende todo lo que le puedan estar diciendo, pero usted al momento de hablar se queda en blanco. Va a rebotar ahí. All right? uh -huh. Entonces, uh -huh. y va a llegar un momento en el que pues, usted va a decir, hey, pero le entendí. Y yo sabía el vocabulario de cómo contestarle, pero en ese momento me bloqueé. Y es por eso. Es por la falta de práctica. Right? Uh -huh. Entonces... A veces, aunque sea corto el vocabulario que nosotros tengamos, pero si lo vamos practicando, uh -huh. nos vamos quitando eso de la cabeza de que, ah, no sé cómo eh, responder. Y ahí usted ya va a tener eh, una pauta como para decir, ah, este vocabulario puedo usar para responder acá. Y uh -huh. poco a poco nos vamos eliminando eso de, ah, necesito traducir qué quiere decir para luego yo decirlo, right entonces, nosotros, nuestro cerebro trabaja el doble porque pensamos en español, luego traducimos para luego producir. Entonces, uh -huh. eso poco a poco se va quitando a través de la práctica, right uh -huh. Toda vez que usted sienta que no le cuadra la pronunciación de una palabra, ahora que estamos en el grupo ahí, ya sea de modo personal a, a, mi, a, mi, uh -huh. a mi número, pregunte 
o en el grupo, pregúntenme, teacher, ¿cómo se pronuncia esta palabra? O cosas por el okay. estilo, que créame que con gusto yo le voy a solventar cualquier duda que pueda tener y así poco a poco ir mejorando ya sea en pronunciación o en fluidez de, de, de alguna oración o, o cosas por el estilo, right Entonces, eso poco a poco es de irlo eh, mejorando bastante y ponerlo en práctica. Créame que no necesitamos del gran tiempo al día, pero si dedicamos por lo menos unos 15, 20 minutos a practicar, créame que eso le va a servir de mucho, mucho, mucho. Ok. Right. O inclusive el vocabulario nuevo que se va viendo acá es de irlo uh -huh. incluyendo, right, en la práctica para que ese vocabulario no vaya quedando rezagado y al final se olvide, sino uh -huh. que igual se mantenga vivo a través de la práctica, right. Y ya verá que poco a poco, poco a poco, cuando usted ya venga por el módulo 5, 6 del curso básico, usted va a decir, wow, he aprendido bastante en, est en estos módulos. Right? Uh -huh. Porque ahorita, si, si yo le pregunto, ¿cómo se ve ahorita a como cuando inició en módulo 1? Usted siente que ha avanzado bastante. Sí, ¿eh? sí, sí. Siente que ha aprendido, sí. entonces... Sí. Poco a poco, y si usted pone un poco más de su, de, de su parte al, al, al practicar, a, al explotar a, a, a Adi también, o sea, como recurso didáctico, créame, eso les va a ayudar a las dos a poder mejorar mucho, right Y esa es la idea, sí. acuérdense que el inglés es como cuando un niño está aprendiendo a hablar, un niño se equivoca, pero él va practicando, practicando, practicando hasta que lo perfecciona. Entonces, sí, a veces también al revés, ¿verdad? Cuando, cuando los gringos aprenden a hablar español, hablan bien, bien extraño. Exactamente, exactamente. Ellos como son bastante perseverantes en ese aspecto y son de ese tipo de personas que no tienen miedo al equivocarse, por eso es que a veces aprenden más rápido el español que nosotros, el inglés, right Que básicamente, eh, si comparamos las gramáticas, el español viene siendo más difícil de aprender que el inglés. Así he escuchado. Gramáticas, pero es, pero no lo veo así. <risa> exactly. No, pero ese sería un consejo bastante útil que yo le podría okay. dar. Todo vocabulario nuevo que vaya poniendo, que vaya aprendiendo, póngalo en práctica para que ese vocabulario siempre se vaya reteniendo y usted vaya ganando mayor fluidez al momento de hablar, right? Okay. Pues ya sabe, estamos a la orden ahí, ya sea en el grupo de WhatsApp okay. o en el chat, para cualquier duda que usted pueda tener con relación a una palabra o alguna oración. Ok, right? okay teacher. Nice. Muchas gracias, gracias entonces. Ok, no, gracias a usted. Gracias. Poco a poco vamos a ir mejorando, ok? Ok, see you tomorrow. Ok, okay. see you tomorrow. I hope you have a wonderful night, ok? Bye bye. Ok, bye bye. Okay.